Very gutted. Um, you know, it's a long season. You put so much into it <clears throat> to get to this point. Uh, and then, you know, the way, you know, we had our chances. So, you know, you know I'm not um, a different position in the last couple of these where we got blown out and didn't really have a chance, you know. They went up three scores. We battled back with a couple scores. Defense came up with some big turnovers, and yeah, we had a lot of chances. So, um, but yeah, overall, just pretty gutted. Right. All right, so let's give you some next-gen stats powered by AWS. A little context here. Aaron Rodgers had been one of the best in the business versus the Blitz this season. And against Tampa Bay this season, which includes the Week 6 matchup and this NFC title game loss, two touchdowns to three interceptions. His one interception today coming on a Tampa Bay Buccaneer Blitz. Matt LaFleur, you heard Aaron Rodgers talking about the decision to kick the field goal late instead of go for the touchdown. Here's Matt LaFleur's take on it. Went into the decision to kick the field goal there on fourth and eight, and do you regret that in hindsight? Yeah, anytime it doesn't work out, you always regret it, right? But uh, it was just uh, the circumstances of having three shots and coming away with no yards um, and knowing that you not only need the touchdown, but you'd need the two point. So the way I was looking at it was we essentially had four timeouts with the two-minute warning. And, you know, we, we knew we needed to get a stop. And I thought we were going to have a stop there at the end, but you know they, we got called for for the P, PI, um, and it didn't work out. So I think anytime something doesn't work out, do you regret it? Sure, but we're always going to be process driven here. And the way our defense was battling, the way our defense was playing, we felt like it was the right decision to do, and uh, it just didn't work out. All right, we'll go to Pete Doherty next. Pete. Hey, Matt, on that uh, final touchdown at the end of the half, was that man or cover three, and, and what happened there from what you saw? Yeah, it was uh, man coverage. Definitely not the, the right call for the situation. Um, and you, you, can't, you can't do stuff like that against a good football team and expect to win. So, I mean, really, when you look at it, there's there was – a hundred and I don't know, 20 some odd plays, both on both sides of the ball, plus all the special teams. There was a lot of plays in that game that could have been made that could, could change the outcome of the game. But the ones that really hurt us the most were that play. And then to come out the start of the second half, um, you know, had the fumble and they, they score to make it 28, 10. I mean, that, that really was uh, a big, difference in the football game you just can't do that stuff and I blame us uh, as coaches you know for for putting our guys in that situation we, that's that's inexcusable that should Red Lewis back here with uh, David Carr I mean like I certainly get uh, Matt LaFleur's point there on the uh, fourth goal fourth and goal decision uh, to kick the field goal but but it does come down to missed opportunities and that wasn't the only one it does, and it wasn't the only one, but I think that he touched on something that is, you know, the more he thinks about it, I think that he'll kind of find the answer. And when he said we had three shots at it and we got no yards, well, think about what those three plays were. I mean, you're in shotgun trying to throw the ball into the end zone. You know, if, if you're going to say this is a four, you know, four down territory and you're going to try and win the game here, you're down eight, you know, maybe try to squeeze in a run or two here or, or utilize yeah. something that's just not throw the ball in the end zone. So the more he thinks about it, I mean, He'll he'll figure out what he what he can change as he goes forward. Sure, sure. It goes back to the offense as well, not being able to capitalize on those interceptions, the drop two point conversion. There's so much of it, for sure, that they'll have to analyze. Hey, control your fan experience live from up to seven camera angles, all of Verizon 5G Super Stadium in the NFL app. Available for select games to iPhone 12 users. Geographic restrictions do apply. And when we come back here on NFL Game Day highlights, the Bucks are headed to Super Bowl 55. Tom Brady getting it done for a 10th time.
punt team off the field. You could talk about that. Yeah, I was like, when I come here to not take chances to win the game, you know, um, with the timeout and then the interception, I wanted to come out of there with points. And we said, punt it. Um, but then love the play we had and um, got a great matchup and got the touchdown that I thought was huge. We'll go to Jenna Lane. Hey, Coach, can you just take us through how you're feeling? You inherited a losing team, and in one season, um, it, well, two seasons, I should say, you were able to take them to the Super Bowl. Just how are you feeling right now? What's what's your level of excitement? Oh, I couldn't be happier for our players. They, they put in so much work, and our coaching staff has done such a great job. Ownership gave us everything we needed, and um, yeah, I just couldn't be – any more elated for these guys, uh, the job they put in. We had both backup safeties in there just playing their asses off. And, uh, yeah, it was it was a great team win. We'll go to Greg Allman. Bruce, Dean, just speak to your defense and just the way they stepped up, especially after the interceptions in the second half, to, to not let that get worse than it did there. Yeah, I can't say enough about them. Fourth quarter, they've been great in the fourth quarter all year. And uh, we got some great stops. Um, took a couple chances on offense and tried to get more points, and it, and it didn't work out. But they came back and, and got the ball right back for us. We'll go to Scott Reynolds. Bruce, congrats on the win. You're making Thanks, it Scott. by hosting the Super Bowl. Talk about that uh, special milestone for the Buccaneers and yourself. Yeah, yeah. so many teams don't get a chance because they don't get the Super Bowl in their stadium. Um, it was obviously the goal of ours to start this season, but it, getting to the Super Bowl wasn't what our goal is. Our goal is to win it. We'll go to Joey Knight. Coach, how surprised were you, or were you surprised when they went for the field goal there late? No, I thought it was, uh, they had a lot of confidence in their defense at that point in time, and, you know, it was, a, I thought it was an, a good, good, good move by them. We'll go to Ira Kaufman. Nice job, Mr. Arians. Nice job. Thank you, Ira. <laughs> Bruce, you just knocked off three division champions on the road. What does that say about the mental toughness uh, of, of your squad? Yeah, that's the scary thing about coming to the Super Bowl at home. We've been playing so good on the road. And uh, this was fun because we had loud fans. And uh, man, this was real like – this was football for the first time this year for me. I mean, the fans were great here and uh, what an unbelievable atmosphere. But to be able to come home to play Super Bowl at our place and not have to get on a plane and do all the things that uh, this crazy year that has us doing, um, it would be weird. It would not even feel like Super Bowl when we don't have all those damn press conferences. We'll go to Jim Trotter. Hey, Bruce, congratulations, first off. Um, hey, Jim. I wanted to ask you just about the journey to this point for you, um, where you seem like you were done with football a couple of years ago, um, all of the time that it took you to even become a head coach in the first place, and now to think that you're about to take a team to a Super Bowl. Can you put into words what that journey has been like for you? Uh, it would be really hard, Jim. It would probably take a long time. <laughs> you know, for me, it, uh, uh, there, were, there were times when – I, I never thought it would happen. I never thought I'd get a head coaching job. And um, after the, the cancer scare in Arizona, you know, sitting out that year and then coming back, um, this, this has been the most rewarding year of coaching in my life. We'll go over to Sarah Walsh. Hey, Bruce, you talked about uh, this week when those banners went up that you guys weren't going to be talking about the Super Bowl, that you weren't looking forward to the Super Bowl because you end up getting your butts kicked if you do that. But now that it's here, does this moment feel real yet to you? And if so, when did, it, when did this really feel real for you? I guess when I was holding the, the Hallis Trophy, uh, it's like, oh, my gosh, we're, we're actually going to do it. And, uh, and uh, we, we can dream about looking across the street for two weeks. We'll go to John Romano. Hey, Bruce, going back to the end of the first half again, the punt team actually came out on the field. Did you change your mind or had somebody sent the punt team out first and you said to get them off? I sent the punt team out and I, you know, went through a couple of scenarios in my mind. Clock was stopped and, uh, you know, I said, no, we're going back out. We're going back. we got a good play. We're going back out and, and try to get some points. We'll go to Scott Reynolds. We have time for a few more. 
Bruce, Sean Murphy Bunting's interception set that, that play up. He's had three picks now in three postseason games. Speak to that and then also the throw from Brady to Miller. Yeah, I mean, Sean played that thing perfectly. I thought he was going to get another one later when they hit that same ball on him. But uh, Sean has been playing outstanding. He's got all his confidence back, as the whole secondary does and should, because they're playing really, really well. Uh, we just got a great matchup. I think they were playing for us going trying to get to the field goal range. And Scotty just ran right by King. And uh, when it was when we lined up, you could tell it was going to be a touchdown. Just had to, just had to protect and throw the ball. We'll go to Rick Stroud. Bruce, Tom had some interceptions, three possessions, some balls bounce off guys' hands, some drops as well. What, what can you say about the belief that he's instilled in your team and the ability to come here in his first year after 20 seasons somewhere else and go to a Super Bowl? Yeah, Rick, I mean, it's, uh, you know, Chris dropped one, but then he makes an unbelievable catch on a, on a ball way down the field. Uh, Mike never drops a ball and one bounces off his hands. But, uh, you know, the resiliency of the crew – the defense just gritted their teeth and went out, and got it back for us, and then we made, you know, some big, big plays. Chris made the big play at the end, and a couple other big plays on first down plays, and you know, it just, he it just, it's water off his back. It's just another, hey, let's go get it, and uh, another faces him. All right, we're gonna go to Greg Almond and then close with Ira Kaufman. Bruce, if you can talk about your two pass rushers who had such a big game between 